Happy Friday, you minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Me Condition. And today, I'm going to be going over my top 10 favorite Marvel Omnibus covers. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, before I get started, I just want to remind everyone that we put out videos much like this one every day. So, if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. Now, one of the most important things to me when it comes to when I was a collector of comic books and collected single issues was the cover. Sometimes the cover would drive me to purchase a comic book. And I thought about that, and some of you all have suggested me making this list, and I separated the DC and Marvel, but we're talking about the difference between $2, $3, $4 comic books to the retail price of $100, $125 for these books. So I figured like the, the way that the covers are decided has to mean something, has to mean that this is what you're going to get in this book. So this is just my personal list. Some of these have direct market covers. Some of these are standard edition covers, but the rule is I have to own it. That's That was the rule. So let's kick off this list and I would love to know what yours are. Leave those comments down below after you check mine out. Uh, I will have honorable mentions because the last, this isn't a countdown, but the last book I'm gonna talk about the cover, the title of the book is an actual spoiler, so I don't wanna give that away for anybody. So kicking off my list is Wolverine. Yes, this is completely based on Frank Miller's uh, Wolverine number one, the Chris Claremont and Frank Miller miniseries, but this is Steve McNiven's take on it. And I love, um, well, not 100% of the time, but most of the time I love when there are homages to original covers or original posters or pinups that were in the back of comic books. And this is one of my favorite ones, and I think you kind of know what to get when you're looking at this. But yeah, this kicks off the list. I love this cover. Damn, how do you say no to that? You have Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet looking all badass with all these arch nemesis in the back like Mephisto and Death, Silver Surfer riding his uh, surfboard. Okay, that's not that badass, but it is because you have all the Infinity uh, gems there. Not stones, gems. That's right, we're basing it on the comic book. But I, th there was a chance for me to get both covers, and for this, this is the one that I always like. This is the cover to issue one by George Perez, and that's why I chose it, because this really is what you get inside of this book. So, hell yes. Secret Wars by Alex Ross. Now, one of the rules I didn't talk about is that these don't have to be my favorite stories. I'm just talking about the cover art, and... I love this modernization take on Mike Zeck's cover to issue one of Secret Wars, the original Secret Wars, but this is Alex Ross. Man, can he make everybody look so awesome. And this one just pops in your face. You get all these heroes in here. So yes, this is a big selling point for a lot of people is when they look at this. I think it was originally a poster if I'm not mistaken. Next up is Punisher by Tim Bradstreet. This is from the Punisher Max Omnibus Volume 1 by Garth Dennis. Now, Tim only supplied the covers, but they're so realistic. And this is the one that just, I uh, freaking think it's awesome. Just, I'm not a gun fanatic or anything, but it's just the Punisher, and it symbolizes who the character is. He is surrounded by all this guns, right? It's kind of over the top ridiculous, but it's, yeah, it's who the character is. And his realistic take, oh man, he's done uh, posters, I think, for like movies and things, but, his Punisher covers when Garth Dennis was writing the book, they are freaking awesome. So next up we have the World War Hulk cover by David Finch. This is from the Omnibus. And this reminds me of something that I would have picked up as a kid just based on the cover alone. Like, why is Hulk sitting on this throne? Why are all the good guys fighting each other? What the hell's happening? Find out by reading this book. Of course, this book is a lot more expensive than I paid for comic books when this has a retail price of $125. And when I would have seen a cover like that as a kid, it might have been, I don't know, 60, 75 cents. But yes, th I think this is the variant cover. Oh no, this is this is the standard edition cover to issue three, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, love it. It's a great choice for this event. And if you're enjoying this video at this time, I just want to remind you to hit that like button. And we can be found on Patreon and Redbubble. And on Redbubble, you can get our logo on stickers for t-shirts, things like that. And Patreon is a great way to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you to our existing patrons. Let's keep going with this list. I can't be talking about Marvel Omnis without mentioning an X-Men title, right? I know I had Wolverine in there. But here is Arthur Adams on X-Men Classic. Woo! 
man, I had this poster as a kid and there's two variations of this, right? Like this is the other one with modernized colors and it's got more characters, but I had the original poster from the 1986 series from uh, classic X-Men number one. And all it is, I've done videos on these before, but just that team, just all those characters in the front and you have Arthur Adams drawing them, why would you not pick up this book? And the reason I picked up Classic X-Men number one as a kid was because of that Arthur Adams art. But I've done videos on what this is. If you want to check that out, it's on our Omnibus Reviews. But yeah, absolutely, this belongs on the list for sure. Next up on the list is Earth X Trilogy. The, the I went with the Omega instead of the Alpha, and I'll talk a little bit about why. But first, of course, I had to have Alex Ross on this list more than one time. It is Alex Ross. We are very blessed to have him drawing comic books. Like this guy that's an amazing painter drawing comics is it's really a huge blessing for the comic book industry. He did he did supply the covers for this event as well as co-plotted it with Jim Kruger. But I went with this particular uh cover because I mean, why would you not find out why Days of Future Past Wolverine is there with this Captain, this old Captain America? And is that really Kill Raven and Machine Man back there? What What's happening here? Who's this guy with wings? Is that Angel? I don't, it's just mysterious covers like that that I love on comic books. And if I was looking at this, I would definitely be trying to peek inside. And that's why they have them sealed, right? Uh, to see what the internal artwork looks like. But yes, absolutely. Annihilation. Look at that cover by Gabriel Otto. It really reminds me a lot of the Infinity Gauntlet cover. That's why I chose this. You have all the key players on this cover. You have this beautiful painted artwork that just, you wanna know what this book is about, right? And then you have this in the back, also by Gabriel Otto. Come on, how could you not want to read this book, this, this event? And the event itself is pretty damn good too. Um, I almost chose Annihilation Conquest, but I think between the two, I prefer this one. Amazing Spider-Man by David Michelini and Todd McFarlane Omnibus. This is the direct market variant, which is the black costume. And I had to go with that because, I mean, it's the cover to issue 300. Okay, you're missing all the little number 300s, but it is the Todd McFarlane cover to issue 300. And why is Spider-Man wearing a black suit again? Does that mean that he's going to keep it for the next hundred issues? There are all these questions I remember as a kid asking myself. And yeah, it's just a badass cover. I went with this one instead of the regular, uh, the, the cover to issue 301, because I always like the black and white design more. And of course, you know, this is the issue where they introduce Venom. But yeah, that cover right there by McFarlane, even though it's got modern colors on it, it's still a solid cover. Now, before I talk about that last book, and like I mentioned, the c actual title of the book has a spoiler, so that's why I said I'll leave it for last, I want to do some honorable mentions. So, I'm going to kick it off with The Mighty Thor, the variant cover by Oliver Copiel. I know it's out of print, and hopefully one day we'll, we'll get a reprint from Marvel. I love that cover. It's a take on, of course, the original cover that they used for the Journey into Mystery cover. Uh, the Avengers Volume 2, the variant cover, or the standard edition cover by Alex Ross. That definitely deserves a spot on my list. The Guardians of the Galaxy Omnibus uh, by Alex Gardner. That cover is freaking awesome. That's a great choice. I think it's from issue 20, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Carnage by Clayton Crane. It's the piece of art from Carnage USA. Uh, X-Men, Age of Apocalypse, and of course I have to go with the DM variant by Joe Madureira because you see all these characters that you're familiar with look completely different, so why? And then Fantastic Four by Mike Wieringo. This is the Wade and Wieringo run, and I'm a big fan of his artwork, and I think that is one of my favorite omnibus covers too. So, let's look at the last book. Spoilers, Captain America, The Death of Captain America, and this is by Ed Brubaker. Uh, but the cover itself is drawn by Steve Epting. Now, he did some of the stuff within the collected edition in here, in this omnibus. And the reason I chose this cover is because it speaks a lot to people that are wondering what the heck is going on. Like, even without looking at the title of the book, you see Captain America wearing his glove, he's got handcuffs on, and then there's blood splattered, right, all over the place. And then it says the death of a dream, like in newspapers. Like, what's happening? That's the kind of thing that would draw me to check out a comic book and the kind of thing that if I saw this at a store and I didn't collect comics I would be like hey what the 
the hell's going on with Captain America? Did they kill him? And then, of course, I would look at the title and be like, oh, I guess they did. But that's why this deserves a spot on this list. And at this time, I just want to remind you all to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now those were my top 10 favorite Marvel covers on these Omnibu. Let me know in those comments down below what are your top 10 or your top 5 or your favorite one that you love. Whether it's a direct market or standard edition, hell we've had three covers before like the case of Iron Man or the case of JMS uh, Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2. So let me know those comments down below. I'll be doing a list for DC as well and I guess covers for whatever else you all want me to do. Uh, still working on my top 20 writers and my manga list. I am putting that together, I promise. Now, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to all of you.